find someone new to work with. Now, before you start hollering at them, I want you to holler with your eyes. So just lock in on somebody and be like, hey. The rule is if you are currently sitting with someone, you cannot work with them. You've got 30 seconds, find a new person to work with. Make it happen. No, you're gonna. We're gonna have to share the fun that is Salma. Irene cannot work with Juan. Okay, and Josue, let's assume that you are gonna be driving my computer for part. So you're kind of in a group of three. You the. You're both going to move. There we go. Problem solved. You go to the computer. Okay, Brianna. All right, so the goal for... The goal for the next 40 minutes. I have got zero new information to put into your brains. Zero new information. The whole goal for this next 40 minutes, you are taking stuff that you already know and putting it in a new situation, showing off your smarticle particles. You guys are good working together? Okay, Cynthia, if you haven't started filming, we're going to start filming now. You already did. Fabulous. Now, you've got two handouts. One of them is called Penguin Island. Please put that one away. That's tonight's homework. Now, for three... <laughs> You get to go home with the penguins. Yes. The homework is getting you ready for tomorrow's quiz. So at 5 o'clock, my solutions to Penguin Island are going to come across on your phones and on your laptops. So that you can use this to study for tomorrow's quiz. Okay? So for the rest of this period, I want to work on this problem, the amusement park problem. Thank you. What I'm going to ask you to do, I want you to take the first three minutes. This is going to be three minutes of absolute silence. Imagine this is the quiz tomorrow. This is the level that I'm expecting you to perform at tomorrow. You have three minutes. Here's what I want to have happen in the three minutes. You are reading this through this problem. Jessica, are you with me? <coughs> you are marking this up. You are graphing these functions on your calculator all the time with these multiple rate functions. You should be graphing. There are tricks in this problem that I haven't built into the ones that you've done so far. Read carefully. Be ready to talk in three minutes. Okay, so I can do all your work on my laptop. a good window? Nope. You'll figure it out.
That's right, keep going. Pause the work just for a second. Before we get too far into this problem, you guys are going to get a lot of work done. Somebody put it in their own words. What's going on in this problem? What's happening in this problem? Just McGill. What's happening in this problem? Abel, what's happening? Uh, <clears throat> some people are going in and going out of the amusement park. Okay, so we've got people going into the amusement park. We've got people coming out of the amusement park. What else? Anything else happening in this problem? Mm -hmm. Salma, what else is happening in this problem? Okay, let me ask the question differently. Anybody worried about anything? Something you see in the problem that you think might trip you up tomorrow? Brianna? Yeah, zero. You're not starting at t equals zero. Where are you starting? Okay, so we're going to start at t equals nine. Why are we starting at t equals nine? But what's happening at t equals nine? What's the significance of t equals nine in this problem? Park opens. Salma, what's, what's the significance? The park opens. This is when the park opens, right? Okay, other things. Brianna, thanks for, for sharing that. What else? Other things that might trip you up tomorrow. <coughs> Abel, what else? Uh, people start leaving at uh, noon. Okay, so L of t starts at noon. Okay, how many of you guys notice that? A couple people notice that? Okay. When do people start entering? Miguel, when do people start entering? Uh, uh, like T equals nine or like. Okay, what? Well, go, 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 let's don't base it on your gut. Base it on the reading. When do people start oh. entering the park? Cynthia, when do people start entering the park? At T ten. At T equals ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The park opens at nine. That's when people start entering. But it's there's no people in the park. There's no people in the park at 9 a.m. So I look at my clock, I say it's 9 a.m., boom, there's nobody in the park. Nine, oh. But the, like 9, like in a second later, people start coming in. So E of T starts at T yeah. equals 9. Last class, there were a lot of folks that were worried because there are two different functions happening here. Right? And maybe you're like, I'm not worried about that. Okay, so you've got two different functions. One thing I might be a little bit concerned about is am I entering these functions correctly? Ref oh, <laughs> Whoa, we've got some weird skills happening back over there. Okay, so the thing I like about the TI Inspire, and I realize we're in a TI Inspire only environment, if you type things incorrectly, this should match exactly what's on your screen, right? Do you have 15,600? The whole thing divided by x squared minus 24x plus 160. Great. What's a good window for this? What's a good domain for this problem? What's a good domain for this problem, Jenea? Okay, so my, for my domain, I'm going to go from 0 to 23. And somebody asked earlier, they're like, but what about the window? Like, what's the right range? You're going to have to play around with that. So get yourself a good, get yourself a good range. I can see this, and I'm like... Yeah, I get it. I might even make a little note to myself and say E of T is what I've put in for F1. L of T is what I've put in for F2. Everybody okay? All right, part A, now the points start raining down from the sky. I just want to talk about the setup with everybody, whole group. Okay, I want the integral of E of T dt from 9 to 15. What's the method? Trapezoid. We're using... Trapezoids, right? Specifically for, for trapezoids. If you feel good with this, just, just go with it. You don't need me. If you're going to do the four trapezoids, and I'm going to go from 9 to 15, I need to know how wide is each trapezoid. So 15 minus 9 divided by 4 
think it's 1.5. And then we do the cut point. So Juan, where are the cuts going to be? Um, at 10.5. At 10.5. 11.5. Careful. 12.5. Oh gosh. 12. 12. I had faith. We were going to get there. 9, 10.5, 12. 13.5 and 15. If I'm doing the trapezoid method, Claudia, do you remember the formula for the trapezoids? Uh, one half uh, times base one plus base two. One half base one plus uh, base two times five. the height. So for my first trapezoid, I'm going to say it's a half. How long is base one? Mm -hmm. The first base, I want to be really careful with this. Nine. Now, get that, that's the mistake. It's not nine. You've got to plug nine into your function. You want the height at nine, so it's e of nine plus e of 10.5. One half, base one plus base, height, base two, times your height, that's 1.5. That's your first trapezoid. And you're going to keep on going until you get to the last one. Where are my folks that remember that shortcut? Okay, there, there's, there's a shorter way to do this. Brianna, what's the shorter way? You could do one half. One half. Times three over two. Times three over two. So that's your, your 1.5. Okay, then what? E of nine. Okay, which I'm going to write as, as 10.5. Okay, plus, so e of 9 one time, e of 10.5 twice, keep going. 2 times e of Yeah, that's why we did the cuts on the side so I can see like all the values that I need. So it's going to be 2 times e of 12 plus 2 times e of 13.5 plus 1 times e of 15. Okay. Let's wait. Are you doing the calculations on the side there? What are we getting for the number here? Alejandro's got the number. Brianna's maybe got the number. The setup is going to get you a lot of points, but I need to know the number and I need the explanation. Alejandro, what's the number going to be? 4962.884. 4962.884 says the good looking guy in the green in the back. How many guys are honestly getting that as your number? Jessica's getting that. Brianna's getting that. Cynthia's getting that. Okay, whoever you're partnered with, tell them what that means. What's the meaning of this answer? got the number. Don't tell me. Tell your neighbor. What does this actually mean? E of T represents, hear the words, how fast. E of T is how fast people are entering the park. So if E of T is how fast people are entering the park, Cynthia, what's that definite in the rolling? How many people is in the park? This, oh gosh. I, I liked it and then I stopped liking it. I heard how many people is in the park. It's not how many people, and it's not an English thing. It's not the difference between how many people is in the park and how many people are in the park. It is a how many people, Salma? Um, have entered the park. Have entered the park. Right? E of T is a specific function. E of T is how fast people entered. So how many people entered the park? Now be specific. Don't end it here. How many people entered the park? From t equals 9 to t equals 15. And that number is this 4,962.884. Everybody okay?
I know it's been a while since we've done Riemann sums. I deliberately wanted to get that built in here. All right, part B, find E prime of 15. E prime of 15, what am I asking you to find? I want the derivative. Please remember, this is a calculator active question. There is no need for you to show me your quotient rule skills. And there's no need to graph the derivative. Overkill, you're going to mess up this beautiful screen here, Josue. Josue, can you show them the other place to find the derivative? Right, you go back over here to the calculate screen. You're going to go, okay. It's so funny, all the thoughts that are in my head, none of them are actually getting through to you. <laughs> so you like doing the derivative on the templates? Yeah. That, that's great. Anybody remember the other way to get to the derivative? If you don't like using the templates, what's the other way? But So you hit menu, menu, then calculus, then numerical. Okay, so good, Josue's finally caught up with me. We're going to do menu, calculus, numerical, do we want an integral or a derivative, Josue? <laughs> Way. Which one? Okay, good choice. Your variable is x. Really, for us, it's t, but for the calculator, it's always going to be x. What's the value? 15. 15. Hit enter. Okay, now it gives you the setup. I love this calculator. I want the derivative. I've got to put in the function. Oh, slow the roll here. Oh, x is an O's to you too, buddy. That's what he typed in. He had an x and then an O. It was kind of cute. F1 of x. <laughs> Te amo, baby. All right, F1 of x and x equals 15. Hit enter. Negative 3744 over 25. Now that's nice, but that number doesn't mean as much to me as like a decimal would. Okay, and so you convert it to decimal. So not what I was going to tell you to do, but that's okay. So funny. We are total opposite ends of the thought process here. So e prime of 15, according to my friend in the back, is negative 149.760. Give me a quick thumbs up if, if that worked. Okay. Have a conversation with your neighbor. What does that mean? What does that actually mean? comes the hint since I didn't get a chance to walk around. Your explanation starts with at t equals 15 hours. E is a rate. It's the rate that people are entering the park. So E prime is telling you how that rate changes. So at t equals 15, tell me what the function is. The rate at which People enter the park. People enter the park. What's the what's it doing? It, the rate at which people are entering the park is decreasing. decreasing. Now be specific. It's decreasing at a rate of 149.760. And now the hard part. This is always the hard part. Mm -hmm. What are the units? People, people, people per, per, hour. Hour. per hour. Per hour. This should be, it's either, let's see, what are the units for E? People the per units hour. are people per hour. If it was an integral, if it was the definite integral, the units would be? People, people per hour. People. 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 But with the derivative, we're saying it's people per hour. Per hour, or I heard somebody whisper, people per hour squared. Right, we're units for E over units for T. So it's 
people per hour per hour. We're good? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm you guys can do it part C. If I'm going too slow for anybody, go as fast as you want to go. Walking around, there is a lot of clever stuff happening with the calculator. But not a lot of folks thinking about this as a fundamental theorem of calculus question. And I hoped that the problem that we did involving the definite integral of the acceleration was going to be a giveaway. This is a fundamental theorem of calculus question. Because E prime tells you how fast E of T changes, the definite integral is going to tell you how much it changes. And so to figure out how much it changed, it's just going to be E of 15 minus E of 12. You didn't have to do it that way. Some folks like had their calculator find the derivative as a new function. Shun Lee, you okay there? Hi. Okay, find the derivative as a function, then they found the definite integral, and either way when you do this, I think you get something around negative 351. Okay, but seeing this as the fundamental theorem of calculus is what I was really hoping you were going to do. I can tell from the googly eyes he's making at me that Alejandro had this part under control. Anybody else see it as the fundamental theorem of calculus? How many guys get negative 351? Because you had your calculator find the derivative and go find the antiderivative. Okay, good. All right, this next couple of parts, I'm only going to give you guys five minutes. I want you to tackle part D, part E, no, skip E for now. D, F, and G. D, F, and G should be really good. And plus, why don't you join a group for a little bit? People, just people, right? And this would be not people. People per hour? This has to be people per hour. For now, don't worry about the explanation, just worry about getting to the number.
right? That, that's, and there's people leaving at that time. There's people entering at that time. So we give you that time. Oh, be careful. I think some people are forgetting. There was something tricky we talked about in the beginning. Yeah, the only thing we just don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're going to college. The guys around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what I thought. Yeah, it's the same problem yesterday. Is that now we just don't have a. We don't have a starting point. Which was ten thousand yesterday. So put put thirteen to fourteen. Yeah, right. Thirteen to fourteen, yeah. Mm -mm. No, you're not listening. No, don't listen. You're not listen to him. Nine to fourteen? Nah, listen. Fourteen to nineteen. Fourteen to fifteen. Oh my God! Stop talking, Miguel. Okay, no, no, no. okay. let's settle the dispute that seems to be happening all over God's green earth here. If I want to know the number of people that are in the park at time t equals fourteen. I need to consider three things. Number one, how many people were in the park at the beginning? Zero. How many people were in the park? Zero. Zero. Okay, zero. I'm going to write it just to make it really obvious. Zero. Plus, what else am I considering? The number of people that entered. So clearly that's going to involve the integral of E of T dt. There, I did not see any disputes there. Everybody had an integral of E of T dt. The question to think, though, is, when do they start entering? Nine. Nine. They start entering at nine. When do they stop entering? Fourteen. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. The question is, how many are in the park at two p.m.? When did they stop entering? Twenty-three. When did they stop entering? If my question is, how many people are in the park at two p.m.? Fourteen. At fourteen. Okay. Number of people that I started with. Plus, how many people came in? Don't stop here. Minus the integral of L of T dt. And my questions for you are the same as before. When do they start? Twelve. They start at twelve. When do they stop? Fourteen. They stop at fourteen. I really want to pay attention to that guy over there. So it's the number of people there in the beginning, plus how many people entered, minus how many people came out. And Cassandra, did you get a, a number for that? No. Okay, can you enter it in your calculator and tell me what you're going to get? What did you get? 3,871. 3,871.0. Okay, Shanley's got 3,871.090. I like it, don't love it. 3,871.090. 3, Two reasons that I don't love this. Janaea, one reason? It says round to the whole number, round. 3,871. That's one reason I don't love it. Second reason I don't love it? Ooh. I need units. Claudia, what are the units going to be? Uh, Has to be people. Everybody all right? All right. So let's flip over to the back, shall we? We've only got about 10 minutes left, and I want to do these last ones as well. Part um, G. Generate an integral equation which can be used to determine when the number of people in the park is equal to 1,000. One minute to work on your own, then get an opportunity to check in with your partner. 
I want an equation that involves integrals for when the number of people in the park is equal to 1,000. Good time to check in with your partner on this one. Yeah. I have not seen the perfect answer yet. I've seen a lot of close calls. is folks know it's going to have to be a thousand equals something, right? I need a thousand people in the park. <clears throat> the significance of T is when do we actually get a thousand people in the park? Well, if I want to know the number of people in the park, it's the number that I had in the beginning, zero, plus how many people entered, nine, starting at nine, ending at? 23. Not 23. Nine. At T. Because you want to know when do I get to a thousand people. So it's going to be integrate from 9 until t. Before you tear me apart, let me just keep writing. E of t dt. Oh, no. No. But let me finish writing this. Minus how many people left between when they started leaving and time t. 12 to t dt. And Brianna, what's the thing that you don't like? Okay, that's a thing to not like, for sure. I thought there was something very specific that you didn't like here. It's the variables, right? So fix it for me. Hello? Oh, okay. Okay, give me a letter. Give me, give me a good letter. Q. Q. Perfect. As long as it's not a letter that you're already using for something else, it's fine. How many of you guys had that? Maybe you had X, maybe you had some other letter. Not T. All right, now the tough one. Part H. Abel, what's part H? You want me to read it? Yes, please. Okay. On uh, the time interval, 9 is uh, 9 plus 10 or 8 plus 3 is 12. Greater than or equal to t, which is greater than or equal to 23, at what time will the number of people in the park be greatest? When is the number of people in the park the greatest? We wrote greatest, but what you really hear here is absolute max. Absolute max. I will tell you, I also want you to hear in your head, cha-ching! 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 Greatest means absolute max. That also means I will let you in it is worth the most number of points. But it's worth the most number of points because you're going to have to do the most amount of work. So, Josue, why don't you scoot back and bring us back to the graphs. When is the number of people in the park going to be an absolute max? Absolute max. Absolute min. Where do you start? Where do you start? Salma, where do you start? Uh, the endpoint. You have to check out your endpoints first. You're on a closed interval. You've got your graph. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do what Miss Blakely does. Miss Blakely teaches AP Calc at ECN, and her kids rock the house on this. They make a little table. They say, okay, this first column represents the time. The second column, what am I trying to make? absolute max. The thing that I want to make really, really big or really, really small is the number of people. 
So I'm going to check my endpoints. How many people at time nine? Don't overthink it. Zero. Number of people at time nine? Zero. Zero. Park was empty. Zero. Number of people at time 23? Zero. Not zero. I, you're going to have to think more calculus and less real world here. At time t equals 23, to figure out the number of people that are in the park. We're going to have to figure out, okay, I started with zero. Of course, you don't have to write the zero, right? But I'm just going to keep going back to that. Zero plus how many people entered the park from 9 to 23. Minus, minus how many people left the park from 12 to 23. <laughs> You can get whatever that number is going to be. We've only got three minutes, so let's let's kind of hang on this for a little bit, and then the where you have to do some thinking. We've checked the endpoints. What else? What's the thing you absolutely don't want to forget, Salma? The point of intersection. Okay. What I was hoping you were going to say, the fancy word for this, because this works all the time, is candidate. the candidate. Where might I have the greatest number of people? The endpoints, we're going to check those first because those are pretty quick and easy. Where might I have a max? If the blue represents the rate of people entering the park and the red represents the rate that people are leaving the park, when might I have a max? It has to be. Could it be over here? What's happening to the number of people in the park? At this time over here, increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. Over here? Increasing. Increasing. Over here at this highest point? It's still increasing. We're still increasing. E of t is greater than L of t. Over here? Decreasing. We're, is everybody okay with the decreasing? Where does that change happen? It happens at the intersection point. It's this guy right here where I'd say number of people changes from increasing to number of people decreasing. So on your calculators, I hope you're doing this as well. All right, we're going to find that candidate. So you find that intersection point, and according to my friend Josue, we're finally synced up. Josue's figured out 15.795. Don't stop there. Don't stop there. If you figured out 15.795, the next thing is to fill in your table. How many people at 15.795? 513. 513, oh gosh, no. All your calculations in this column over here are going to look and feel the same way. It's going to be the number of people at the beginning plus, stay with me for a second, how many people entered the park from 9 until your intersection point, which for, if you found the intersection point, Josue, I'd also ask you to store it. Right, this is where storing is going to be helpful. You just say go from 9 to A, E of T dt, minus the integral, oh my god, I almost wrote 9. 12 to A, L of T dt. I know. Okay, and I'm going to say that this guy over here is A. Check your endpoints. Check your candidate. <coughs> Figure out the number of people at each time. Whichever one of these is the biggest, I think it's going to be this guy down here. That's your max. Tonight's homework with the penguin. I penguin.